Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket hold special places in the hearts of New Englanders. Their lovely beaches, tide pools, lobster shacks, and bike paths evoke summer fun and relaxation. But there is a deeper, much older story hidden in the landscape of the Cape and Islands. And it's a story that will take us thousands of miles north of Massachusetts to fully understand. It turns out that the story of Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket are intertwined with the story of this barren landscape in the Arctic. Because both stories tell how glacier ice has reshaped the Earth's surface in the past and in the present. Glaciers flow downhill by gravity. Their own weight carries them forward. Although glaciers are made mostly of solid ice, they flow in slow motion, similar to the way a river flows. And as it does so, the glacier picks up loose rock and breaks up the rock underneath it. Although they move very slowly, glaciers are incredibly powerful forces of nature. They have the power to literally tear down mountains. So what happens to all of that rock that was pulled away from the bedrock over which the glacier flowed? At the front and edges of glaciers, we find long mounds called moraines. A moraine is basically a collection of loose debris, often referred to as glacial till. The material in a moraine can be as large as boulders and as small as microscopic clay particles. Usually a moraine is a jumbled mixture of many different sizes of rocks, and all of this material has been carried by the glacier and deposited in front of the glacier, at the side of the glacier, or even within the glacier. You can think of a glacier as a sort of conveyor belt, carrying debris from where the glacier picks it up, often miles and miles away from the end of the glacier to the front of the glacier. Consider that a glacier is constantly flowing forward, but at the edge of the glacier, where it is too warm to continue forward, the ice there will melt and the rocks that the glacier was carrying will get left behind. The collection of debris that is left at the front of the glacier is known as a terminal moraine. The size and appearance of a terminal moraine depends on how long the glacier is in a stable position. The longer that a glacier stays in one spot, the larger the moraine will be because there is more time for debris to accumulate at that spot. Terminal moraines can be found along the southern edge of New England. It turns out that Long Island, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket all contain moraines, which represent the maximum extent of the Laurentide ice sheet at the end of the last ice age. Cape Cod has a terminal moraine along the western part of its arm, which represents the position of the Laurentide ice sheet as it stayed for a long period of time after its initial retreat. Beyond the moraine, glacial till can continue to flow due to meltwater at the front of the glacier. This area is known as an outwash plain. Outwash plains can contain fast-moving braided channels. Sediment often gets sorted in outwash plains, with larger rocks and boulders being deposited nearest the terminal moraine and smaller particles traveling farther away before they are deposited. Outwash plains serve to further spread out glacial till beyond the moraine. In this video, from the outwash plain near Kongsvagen Glacier in Svalbard, you can see many of these features. Outwash plain deposits are found south of the moraines along Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, and Long Island. As the glacier flows, broken up bits of rock get deposited along the sides of the glacier. This can happen as the glacier pushes loose rock up along its sides, and also by streams carrying rock down from the valley through which the glacier flows. This buildup of debris will be left behind after the glacier retreats, and it is known as a lateral moraine. Lateral moraines can be quite large. This lateral moraine created by the Kongsvagen Glacier is at least 10 to 20 meters high. When two glaciers float together, their lateral moraines will merge, forming a line of debris along the middle of the glacier. This is known as a medial moraine. When multiple glaciers come together, multiple medial moraines will form. You can actually look at a large glacier and count how many glaciers must have merged together by counting the number of medial moraines. 
The amount of material that collects in lateral and medial moraines can be quite impressive, such as in this medial moraine created by the confluence of the Kongsvägen and Kronobrien glaciers. Studying LIDAR imaging technology can also reveal much more subtle glacial events. These parallel lines in the LIDAR map of Maine tell an interesting story of ice and sea level changes at the end of the last ice age. At the end of the last ice age, around 18,000 years ago, the ice retreated and sea levels rose with the added meltwater flowing into the ocean. But it turns out that the incredible amount of ice, up to 5,000 feet thick over parts of New England, was so heavy that it pushed the Earth's crust several hundred feet down into the mantle. You can imagine how this works by considering how a boat floating in the water will sink deeper into the water if you load it up with cargo. Eventually, the land rebounded back up after the ice retreated, but the crust rebounding back up to its current position took a much longer time than it took for the sea levels to rise. So before the land had time to rise back up, the sea intruded up onto the land. In Maine, the shoreline intruded more than 50 miles in some places. During this time, as the sea level was higher, but glaciers were still in retreat, small moraines were forming at the end of tidewater glaciers along the coast. Slowly, as the sea level dropped due to the rebounding of the crust, these moraines were exposed. LIDAR maps of Maine show numerous places where these moraines appear. These are known as Degir moraines. How often these Degir moraines formed is not fully understood. In some places, they may even represent an annual deposit of material. Studying these subtle features made visible by LIDAR can help scientists reconstruct the way sea levels changed after the last ice age. In areas that have recently become deglaciated, often small ridges of loose glacial till are visible. These ridges show us where a part of the glacier sat grounded in a more or less stable location for a period of time before it melted back. As the mass of ice pushed forward, individual blocks of ice pushed and slid against one another. Between these blocks of ice, sediment was pushed forward and up. When the glacier melted, small straight ridges of sediment, known as crevasse squeeze ridges, were left behind. You can see this process occurring along the edge of a grounded glacier. Nearby, we can see the ridges which remained after this part of the glacier melted away. We can imagine what the glacier might have looked like, perhaps even as recently as 50 years ago. So let's put this all together. What's going on in this scene in Svalbard, and how does it connect with the coast of Massachusetts? At first glance, you might think you're looking at a terminal moraine from this receding glacier looking south. But as you zoom out to get a wider perspective, you notice that this moraine continues back. Now we can see that this is actually a lateral moraine from the larger Tidewater Glacier to the east. In fact, we can see another moraine, this time a medial moraine, showing where two glaciers merged. Moving downhill, we see the outwash plain, which distributes glacial till still further. Interspersed in the outwash plain are squeeze ridges, evidence that the glacier once sat here before retreating to its present location. This story tells us that the first glacier we observed must have retreated before the larger one to the east did and must have retreated fast enough to keep its terminal moraine from forming. LIDAR can reveal the story of how glaciers created the Cape and the islands as well. In these images, you can see quite clearly where the moraines are on Martha's Vineyard, which is the remnant of debris left behind by the ice sheet at its maximum size. Then on Cape Cod, we can see another moraine representing a point at which the glacier retreated slightly and then remained fixed for a period of time before finally retreating back at the end of the last ice age. It's pretty cool to learn that places like Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, and Nantucket have such a fascinating history tied to the power of ice to change the land we live on. 
And it's fascinating to be able to reconstruct the past stories of glaciers around the world using moraines as the storytellers. Thank you.